So to our friends and enemies and frenemies online, we say shalom to you all. Today we're going to talk about uh, the spirit of the holy gods, the spirit of the holy gods. And I want all the leadership, and when I say leadership, I'm talking about you soldiers, officers, captains, to pay very close attention. We're going to open up with Numbers chapter 11. The spirit of the holy gods. Small g, by the way, small g. Numbers chapter 11, verse 16 and 17, please. Numbers chapter 16, verse, excuse me, Num Numbers chapter 11, verse 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, gather unto me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people and officers over them and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee there. And I will take of the spirit which is upon thee and will put it upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee that thou bear it not thyself alone. So the spirit that was upon Moses was the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to take you through a few scriptures to show you that the spirit that was upon Moses was the Holy Spirit. And it was sent and, and sent upon the 70 elders. Sometimes in a Christian church, we are taught that the Holy Spirit came in Acts chapter 2. That is a falsehood. That is wrong. Okay? Jump down to verse 24 and verse 25. Verse 24. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. So this was the Holy Spirit. That's what allowed them to prophesy. Remember when Moses went up on the mountain and it said his face glowed when he came down. Okay, from there, go to John 14, John chapter 14. Let me ask a question. Let me look, see who's over there. Um, you, big bro. Yeah, you, you know what I'm talking about. I got a question for you. Adonaiah, thank you. Give him the mic. Shalom, Shalom Adonaiah. Do you have the Holy Spirit? It's yes or no? Yes. Okay. All right. That's all I wanted to know. That's all I wanted to know. Give me John 14, verse 18. John chapter 14, verse 18. I'm, I'm asking a question because I did, I, I said to say, asked the same question to another brother, and he said, I don't know. I said, how long you been in the truth? He said, seven years. I said, something wrong then. You shouldn't even be teaching. He's an officer. Well, I ain't going to say his rank, but he's here in, in Greenleaf. Y'all saw Greenleaf? That's a good series. John 14, verse 18. John chapter 14, verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me. All I want is 18. Read yes, 18 sir. again. Verse 18. Start at 17, start at 17. Verse 17, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. The world cannot receive the spirit of truth, go ahead. Because it seeth him not, mm -hmm. neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. And shall be in you, go ahead. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. You got to stress the I. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. He's telling you that his spirit is that Holy Spirit. It is not Muhammad. It is not Elijah Muhammad. It is not Farrakhan. What other doctrines they got out there about this scripture? I think that pretty much was it, right? Christ is telling you he's that spirit. Okay, jump down to verse 26. Verse 26. I heard a Christian ask an Israelite, do you have the Holy Spirit? And the brother said, I'm not sure. Read verse 26. Verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit is the same thing. Go ahead. Whom the Father will send in my name. What would the Holy Spirit do? He shall teach you all things. He shall teach you all things. And bring all things 
to your remembrance uh -huh. whatsoever I have said unto you. So the Holy Spirit would bring to your remembrance your history that you're the Israelites, the covenants that was made to your forefathers, because now you know who your forefathers are, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, why we went into slavery and captivity, why we are oppressed, and what we need to do to survive as a people to get through coming tribulation. That's what the Holy Spirit would do. The Holy Spirit would teach us God's laws, statutes, and commandments and show us how to apply. That's what the Holy Spirit would do. Read it again. Verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. You got black Christians on the street Talking about they got the Holy Spirit. When you ask them, what's your nationality? They talk about, I don't know. I'm African-American. You, you don't have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would teach you who you are in the Holy Bible. Everybody understand that? That's what the Holy Spirit would do. Do you got, got to keep the commandments? No, you ain't got to keep the commandments. The Holy Spirit would teach you. That's why we went into slavery, because we broke the commandments. The Holy Spirit would teach you that Christ said, if you want eternal life, what? Keep the commandments. That's what the Holy Spirit would do. Arguing with these dumb black Christians. You better shut your black lips. The hell is this? Give me John 20 and verse 22. Let me show y'all something. John chapter 20, verse 22. And when he has said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. Remit, remitted means forgiven. And then it says, and whosoever sins you retain, meaning there is no forgiveness for them, they are retained. But the part I want you to look at is verse 22. Read it again. Verse 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive. He breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Hmm. Now that's different than Acts chapter... One, give me Acts chapter one. Ariel, that's your phone? <laughs> give me Acts chapter uh, one. And verse six. Acts chapter one and verse six. Now we're going to compare the difference between John 20 and verse 22 and Acts chapter one, verse six through eight. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him saying, Lord, Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Everybody thought that that was the time the kingdom would be established. That's why John the Baptist said, sent his uh, disciples to ask him, do we need to look for another? Why? Because John thought the kingdom was going to be established at that time. But he was, he was wrong. Read it again. When they therefore will come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? The next part of that verse, he said, will you at this time restore the kingdom of, to Israel? The kingdom was never for all nations on the planet Earth. The kingdom's only for the Israelites. Read. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father hath put in his own powers. Christ said only the father knows that time. Go ahead. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Wait a minute. Didn't in John 20, he breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost? Now he's saying in Acts, this is some time later, read that again. Verse 8. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. There's one word in verse 8 that shows the difference between this verse here and John 20 and 22. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, uh, Yuri, uh, you, Yuri. Yes, sir. <laughs> shalom. Uh, shalom, Bishop. Power. Yes, power. That's the difference, power. The Christians always focus on power, but we don't have that power in this day and age. Raising the dead, uh, sending handkerchiefs so that people get heat, all that, mm -mm, that's gone. That was temporary for that time. Okay, jump down to Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4. Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. 
And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That's power. To speak with a language you never knew, that was power. And that was just one level to it. It gets heavier when you keep, when you, give me, let me show you. Go, go to Acts 5, 15 and 16 about this power. Acts chapter 5, verse 15. In so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities. So round why did they want Peter's shadow to overshadow them so that they could get healed? Imagine just your shadow alone healing people. That's why I said that power was temporary for that time. Now go back to John 20 and 22. I'm going to show you what we got today. John chapter 20, verse 22. Mm -hmm. And when he has said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Now, here's the precept to it. Give me Luke 24. Because Luke is discussing the same thing that John discussed. Luke 24, verse 44 and 45. Luke chapter 24, verse 44. And he saith unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Here it comes. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. That's the Holy Ghost that John was making reference to when he breathed on them. Okay. He opened their understanding to the scriptures. That's what we got, brothers and sisters. That's what we got today. Okay. From there, give me John 3.34. John chapter 3, verse 34. Mm -hmm. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. Christ came and had no measure in the Spirit. Christ was without measure in the Spirit. But what about you and I? Let's look at Romans 12 and 3. Christ had no measure in the spirit. But what about us? Romans chapter 12 and verse 3. If I'm going too fast, you let me know. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. See that? God hath dealt. That's the bottom part is what I want. God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. We have a measure. Christ was without measure. Understand that thing. That's why he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, was able to raise the dead, heal the sick. He was without measure. We, on the other hand, have measures. We have a measure. From there, give me Psalms 51 and 11. We know this one. Psalms chapter 51, verse 11. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. So King David had the Holy Spirit. When he repented, he asked the Lord not to take his Holy Spirit from him. What, what do you mean Holy Spirit? He wasn't doing no miracles. No, he wasn't. But he had understanding of the scriptures. That's the level of, under, that's the, level of the spirit he had. That's the measure King David had. And let me show you some more. Let me show you about King Saul. First Samuel chapter 10. We're going to read 6 through 10. First Samuel chapter 10. First Samuel chapter 10 and verse 6. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, mm -hmm. and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. When it says the spirit of the Lord shall come upon you, and you shall uh, prophesy and be turned into another man, it's referring to the Holy Spirit. Read it again. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them and shall be turned into another man. Now that part right there and be turned into another man. I always say this thing. 
If you are the same grimy Negro or Negress that you were before you came into this truth and you've been here more than a year, something wrong with you. We're going to go into them scriptures. Why are you still that same grimy Negro? You still lying. You still secretly committing adultery. You still on porn. You still smoking weed. You still got the dildo in the dresser drawer. Let me move on. Read on. <laughs> Verse 7. And let it be when these signs are come unto thee that thou do as occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal. And behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee and show thee what thou shalt do. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. That's when we pray and ask the Lord to give us his spirit. We got to pray that he gives us another heart, another mind. Go ahead. And when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of the prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. That's how you know it's the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. Give me chapter 16 of the same book, verse 15. First Samuel, chapter 16, and verse 15. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Let's start at verse 14. I like 14. Verse 14. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. See that? A lot of times we get the Holy Spirit and we think we good. But King Saul began to disobey the Lord. When we start to disobey the Lord, read that again. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Y'all see that? An evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. The same thing that happened to King Saul can happen to each and every one of us, male and female. You come in, you repent of your sins, you're doing good. But you get trapped up in sin. And then an evil spirit comes on you. Okay, watch this. Let's go into a little more detail on that. Luke 11. And we're going to start at verse, just, just give me verse 13. Luke chapter 11 and verse 13. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? See, you got to ask for the Holy Spirit. He just don't give it to you just because you walk through these doors. When you send up your prayer, hey, find me that scripture, in, I think it's James chapter 1. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about, Yuri? Verse 5. Verse yes, five. James chapter 1 and verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid if not, and it shall be given him. You got to pray for that thing. When it says ask, that means pray for. You got to ask the Lord for wisdom. You got to ask the Lord for the Holy Spirit. Okay, go back to Luke 11, please. Luke chapter 11, verse 13. Give me, yeah, read it, read it again. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? You know what's funny about that verse? Christ called us evil. Why? Because we all wicked as hell. Why? What do you say in Mark 7, 21, what's in us? Find me that in case somebody go, well, I'm not evil. You know who that is. You know what side of the room that is. Give me that. Mark chapter 7 and verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men. Out of the mind of men. Proceed evil thoughts. We all got evil thoughts. Come on. Adulteries. Adulteries in our minds. Fornications. Fornications in our minds. Murders. Murders. Thefts. Thefts. Covetousness, covetousness, wickedness, wickedness, deceit, deceit, lasciviousness, lasciviousness, an evil eye, an evil eye. That's hatred against your neighbor. Blasphemy, blasphemy, pride, pride, foolishness, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. See that? Go back to Luke 11 
and read 13 one more again. Luke chapter 11 and verse 13. If ye then, being evil. If you, being evil, that he's talking to us. Go ahead. Know how to give good gifts unto your children. Y'all give good gifts to your children, right, Captain Amaziah? Even so, your kids be wicked as hell, and you're giving them good gifts. You're going to graduations, and you know the kid was just on a strip pole. Damn. Got a breast showing on Twitter. Read it again. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? We got to ask for that thing. Now jump down to verse 23. Watch Ver this. Verse 20. Now this ties in with King Saul, because sometimes we may not relate to King Saul. But let's see what Christ said. Come on. Verse 23. He that is not with me is against me. Mm -hmm. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth. Here it come. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. That's when you repent. You get on your knees. You ask the Lord for mercy, forgiveness. That unclean spirit, whether it's the spirit of smoking weed, adultery, pornography, child molestation, it leaves. Read. He walketh through dry places. That spirit walks through dry places. Seeking rest. Seeking rest. is looking for another body to inhabit. And finding none. And finding none. He saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out. I will return into the Negro that I just left. Go ahead. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. He findeth it swept and garnished. Now there's a problem. You ever go to a, a, a open house? And the house is swept and garnished. You can hear the echo. The house looks good. You can tell ain't nobody lived there. But somebody is supposed to be living there. Give me that in Revelation. Uh, is it 320? Yeah, give me that. Revelation. Who's supposed to be in your house? Watch this. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him. I will come into him. And we'll sup with him. And we'll sup with him. And he with me. And he with me. Was that it? Yes, sir. So Christ is supposed to be in you. So when we go back to Luke 11 and verse 25, read again. Luke chapter 11, verse 25. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. He goes, the spirit goes, hey, Christ ain't here. The spirit of the Lord ain't in this body. What happens? Read. Then this, go with this is what happened to King Saul. Read. Then goeth he, and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Your problem might have just been weed, but you can't stop it. So now he brings seven other spirits. Spirits of covetousness, adultery, lasciviousness, child molestation. I keep saying that up for a reason. Uh, give me another spirit. Homosexuality. Being weak to the woman, six. Give me one more. Just give me one more. A lion. That's eight. He says seven. But anyway, 26 again. <laughs> then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. Those spirits enter in and dwell there. You thought weed was your problem. Now you're a crackhead. Now you ain't got no money for that crack. You doing anything to get that crack. Come on. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. See that? That's what happened with King Saul. Christ is saying that same thing that happened to King Saul could happen to each and every one of us. Give me uh, 2 Peter 2.18. 2 Peter 2.18. Second Peter chapter two, verse 18. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Hey, hey, Elisha, can we look at wantonness? I'm black, so I'm, I'm not too sure what that means. Wantonness. Can we look it up? I'm going to give you a break today. I didn't give you a bunch of stuff this week. Wantonness. We don't use these words. Can somebody help Alicia spell?
Okay, read that. Wanton, merciless, inhumane, being without check or limitation, having no just foundation or provocation, malicious, unduly lavish, lewd, bawdy, extravagant, playfully mean or cruel. Okay, so it's cruel and lewd. Cruel and lewd. Because under lewd it says causing sexual excitement, lustful, sensual. Then four says playfully mean or cruel, mischievous. So those two things, wanton goes with, deals with sexuality and mean spiritedness. So go back and read it again, please. Second Peter chapter two, verse 18. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh. Now it says they allure through the lust of the flesh. So we know that the next word is going into what we read about sexuality. Go ahead. Through much wantonness. You can't lure nobody through a mean spirit. So you're luring somebody through sexual excitement. I give an example. Many people, not many, some brothers came into the truth because of Isaiah 4 and 1. Seven women shall take hold of one man. That's what I'm talking about right there. And they come in. Read. Those that were Wait, Go ahead. Those that were clean escaped from the, them who live in error. So in the world, you might have either had no wife, no girl, whatever. You was all right. But maybe you had one. one. But then you meet brothers on the street. And brothers on the street lure you through the lust of the flesh. Brother, you know you can have more than one wife. What? What's that? I can have more than one wife. And they'll give you all the scriptures on some of our forefathers who had more than one wife. Then they seal it with Isaiah 4 and 1, which is the kingdom where you have more than one. And now you say, I'm coming in. I'm joining that right there. Now verse 10. Verse 10. But chiefly. Them that walk after the flesh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Verse 19. I'm in. Yes, sir. Verse 19. While they promised them, while they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. They themselves are the servants of corruption. These brothers have two, three, four girlfriends, each living in different states, different cities. They smoke weed. Some of them were uh, uh, porn stars. Some of them were uh, 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 call girls. Only fans. Read. They themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. You're brought in bondage to that same type of man that you tried not to be, because that was your lust. That was your secret lust. Read. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because that's how you escape the wickedness of the world, through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Go ahead. They are again entangled therein. You are again entangled up in that. You escaped it. Now you're in the truth and you somehow get caught up and entangled in entanglement. Caught up right in it again. Go ahead. And overcome. And then you are overcome with that sin. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. So Peter says your latter end is worse than your beginning. That's the same thing Christ said in Luke 11. That's what happened with King Saul. Read. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. That's what King Saul did. That's what Luke 11, that parable is about us turning from the holy commandment and our Spirit is empty, swept, and garnished. Go ahead. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Right. You could wash a pig, and it'll go right back to the mud that it came out from. Give me uh, the Apocrypha, Ecclesiasticus chapter 4, verse 11. And these are things we got to be mindful of because sometimes we think we're good. But there's something troublous, troubling us within our mind and our spirit. And we could get so caught up and entangled in that sin. Ecclesiastes 4.11. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 11. Wisdom exalteth her children mm -hmm. and layeth hold of them that seek her. 
and layeth hold of them that seek her. Read on. He that loveth her loveth life. He that loveth her, meaning wisdom, loveth life. Go ahead. And they that seek to her early shall be filled with joy. Go ahead. He that holdeth her fast shall inherit glory. And wheresoever she entereth, the Lord will bless. Right. That she here is wisdom. Go ahead. They that serve her shall minister to the Holy One. And them that love her, the Lord doeth love. Come on. Whoso giveth ear unto her shall judge the nations. Now we all want, we all, we, we stay right there. Whoso giveth ear unto her shall judge the nations. We go, yeah, I want to judge the nations. But what we just read from verse 11 all the way down is telling us we got to love wisdom, apply wisdom. Then and only then will we be able to judge the nations. Read 15 again. Yes, sir. Whoso giveth ear unto her shall judge the nations. And he that attendeth unto her shall dwell securely. If a man commit himself unto her, he shall inherit her, and his generation shall hold her in possession. Verse 17. For at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways. So wisdom, when you come into this truth, wisdom will walk with you by crooked ways. The crooked ways is your life. Go ahead. And bring fear and dread upon him. Because in your life, you'll notice things start to go wrong. Like before I came into truth, back in New York, we was able to jump the turnstile and evade the police for everything. Soon as we came into truth, we got caught for everything we did. Police was always right there for some reason. And we looked, it wasn't there. We got caught all the time. We was young. We was stupid. Read. And bring fear and dread upon him. And torment him with her discipline. And torment him with her discipline. The discipline of those are those commandments. Go ahead. Until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws. Mm -hmm. Then will she return the straight way unto him. So after some time, wisdom will turn the straight way. Because why? You're, you're getting your life correct. You see where you're making your mistakes. Breaking which commandments? Now you say, you know what, Lord? I see my errors. Give me the straight way. Now wisdom shows you the straight path. Go ahead. And comfort him mm -hmm. and show him her secrets. And show him her secrets. That's when you get that Holy Spirit. And your eyes begin to op open up to the wisdom of the Most High, to his laws. What verse was that? That was verse 18. Read. Verse 19. But if he go wrong. But you decide you want to still smoke weed and look at the porn. Go ahead. She will forsake him and give him over to his own ruin. You see the end result? But if he go wrong, she will forsake him and give him over to his own ruin. That's your fault. Write this down. I can teach you, I'll say we. We can teach you how to repent and do the work of the Most High. But what we can't teach you is attitude or character. I'm going to say that again. We can teach you how to repent. We can teach you how to do the work of the Most High, how to do camp formations and all that. But what we can't teach you is attitude and character. Your attitude and character is something within you. Attitude and character is something you have to work out. Like there's an old expression that says, um, write this down too. Talent can get you in the door, but character keeps you in the room. You can have all the character, you can have all the talent in the world. We've seen that now, you I see. Brothers and sisters with great talent, they'll go on job interviews and all that, but their character and attitude is so bad. They be like, don't call us, we'll call you. Goodbye. That's because of your bad character, your bad Hey, can we look up at our character? Can we look up character? I don't like that. I want some other words for character. Words for character. Show me some other words for character. Like synonyms. Yeah, that's what I want. It's 
Synonyms for character or types of character. Can you see it? Okay. All right. Read that. Yes, sir. Character, the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. Synonyms, personality. Your personality ref references your character. Mm -hmm. Nature, mm -hmm. disposition, temperament, temper, mentality, turn of mind, psychology, psyche, constitution, makeup, make, stamp, mold, cast, persona, attributes, features, qualities, properties, traits, essence, individuality, identity, distinctiveness, uniqueness, spirit, ethos, complexion, key, tone, tenor, ambiance, air, aura, feel, feeling, vibrations, kidney, humor, grain. Okay, that's fine. I like personality. Some of your personalities are messed up. Give me, where we at? We looked up character. Oh. Sirach 419. So what we need to do is improve our character, our attitude. And we always meet people with bad characters and especially women with bad attitudes. We meet that. I don't really see too many brothers with a bad attitude. I meet some of you with bad characters, but I see a lot of sisters with bad attitudes. Those are the ones that can't keep a man, can't get a man, don't know what to do with a man. And bitter, very, very bitter. Okay. There's something, they got something in the world called, uh, what do you call that? Uh, Self-improvement. You, all of us could accidentally fall downhill. You can accidentally fall down a hill, but you can never accidentally fall uphill. To go uphill, it's, uh, what's the word? Intentional. It's intentional to go up a hill. So likewise, when you come in as truth, you stumble, you fall in as truth, but to improve yourself, it must be intentional. I hope everybody understands what I'm saying. To improve yourself in his truth is going uphill. It's intentional. It's not accidental. Meaning what? What does that mean? When you read the scriptures, you make a conscious effort to apply what is written. When you don't want to apply, you're going downhill. You're going downhill. Because when you go uphill, which is intentional, you're trying to achieve a goal to accomplish something that you've never done. You're trying to become spiritually successful in this truth. That's intentional. Improvement is never accidental. It is never, ever accidental. So if you find yourself in a slump, you find yourself in a bad relationship, you got yourself there. I'm trying to get a nice word. You got yourself there because of your bad attitude, your bad character. You know, the scripture says every beast loveth his like. How come I can never find a good man? Every beast loveth his like. What you used to be, sister? I used to be a crackhead. Are you a crackhead now? What kind of man you got? He a crackhead. Oh, I wonder why. I got an abusive man. Were you abused when you were young, sister? Yeah, I was abused when I was young. Hmm. Every beast loveth his like. That's you going downhill. To go uphill is intentional. You got to say, ah, that's not the man for me. He's abusive. He's a crackhead. He ain't got, he don't want to be nothing. I need success in my life. Let me find a better man. Why? Because that better man will see the good qualities in you. Because why? You've, had, you've led an intentional life. A successful life. Give me Susanna. Chapter 1, verse 45 about Daniel. History of Susanna. Chapter 1, verse 45. Therefore, when she was led to be put to death, the Lord raised up the Holy Spirit of a young youth whose name was Daniel. So Daniel had the Holy Spirit. Hmm. I thought that was only in Acts chapter 1. Daniel had the Holy Spirit. Give me Judges. I mean, give me Daniel chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. Daniel 4, verse 8 and 9.
Daniel chapter 4 and verse 8. But at the last, Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. So the heathen said Daniel had the spirit of the holy gods. What do you think they were talking about? The Holy Spirit. That's what they were making reference to. They called it the spirit of the holy gods, though. Read. And before him, I told the dream, saying, O Belteshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee, and no secret troubleth thee. Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen and the interpretation thereof. Jump down to verse 18. Verse 18. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now thou, O Belteshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof. For as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but thou art able, for the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. That's making reference to what we call the holy spirit. The heathen called it the spirit of the holy gods. Give me Judges chapter 6 verse 34 regarding Gideon. Our forefather Gideon. Judges chapter 6, verse 34. But the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, and Abiezer was gathered after him. So the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. He overcame the enemies of Israel. From there, give me Judges 14 and verse 19 about, no, Judges 11, I'm sorry, Judges 11, verse 29, Jephthah. Judges chapter 11, verse 29. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh, and passed over Mizpah of Gilead. And from Mizpah of Gilead, he passed over unto the children of Ammon. Now, Jephthah was born of fornication. He's what, when you read about uh, in the Bible dictionary, a bastard. They call Gideon, Gideon would be known as a bastard because his mother was a harlot, okay? So they said, you are a bastard, and they kicked him out. But the spirit of the Lord was dealing with Jephthah. Did I say Gideon? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Jephthah, I'm sorry, Jephthah, Jephthah, not Gideon, Jephthah. Okay, give me uh, Judges 14 and 19. Judges chapter 14, verse 19. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon and slew 30 men of them and took their spoil and gave change of garments unto them, which expounded the riddle. And his anger was kindled, and he went up to his father's house. So you see with Samson, and the spirit of the Lord came upon him. Now this is power, okay? The spirit of the Lord here is making reference to power, because when you read the history on Samson, he had spiritual power. He had strength beyond strength. From there, give me wisdom of Solomon. We read about Dan David already in Psalm 51. Let's look at Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 in the Apocrypha. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7. And let's start at verse 17. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 and verse 17. For he hath given me certain knowledge. He hath given me certain knowledge. Watch this. What's, this is what the Lord gave him. Of the things that are, namely, to know how the world was made mm -hmm. and the operation of the elements. So Solomon knew how the world was made and the operation of elements. Go ahead. The beginning, ending, and midst of the times. He understood the times. He understood the end, how things would end. He understood the middle time, what we call the Middle Ages. And he understood... The beginning, the beginning, the ending, and the midst. Go ahead. The alterations of the turning of the sun. He knew the sun revolves around the earth. It's only the white man says the earth revolves around the sun. Solomon says no. The turning of the sun, the alterations of the turning of the sun. Go ahead. And the change of seasons. He understood the change of seasons. Go ahead. The circuits of years mm -hmm. and the positions of stars. Read. The, nat the natures of living creatures. He, Solomon understood the nature of living creatures. Go ahead. And the furies of wild beasts. And he understood the you, had a, you know how the white man put cameras around animals' necks or up in their butt to try to figure out how their digestive system works and why they upset? They upset because you got a camera up his butt. How about that? They do such weird things. Even an ant. So read that again about Solomon. The natures of living creatures and the furies of wild beasts. 
the violence of winds. Mm -hmm. He understood tornadoes, hurricanes, and all that. Go ahead. And the reasonings of men. He understood why men lie, why they do what they do, why some men are simps. He understood all of that. Go ahead. The diversities of plants. He understood the, the diversities of plants. And the virtues of roots. And the virtues of roots. Uh, let me say something about that. You can't wait till you get sick and take herbs. Herbs is pre preventative, meaning you take it first to prevent the sickness. You can't wait till you're sick and go, now I'm going to take herbs now. Right. I remember uh, a deacon. Well, did I tell a story before about Deacon Ithon? It's a, it's a human. He, well, he's okay now, so I'm going to talk about him. Anyway, he's, uh, he had a, a blood clot in his leg. I don't know if you remember the pictures. He had this little scooter he would ride around on. So, so, he, was, so he was getting jacked up. So we got him to the hospital. So me and Bishop Yawasau go to the hospital with him. And his doctor came downstairs and said, did you take the blood thinner medication that I gave you? And he goes, no, we saw a YouTube video and they told us to take an herb. And he said, what are you, barbarian? You are, were you raised by wolves? <laughs> so, <laughs> I looked and I thought, of, and it, the, because the blood clot was raising up. It went from the leg, it was going up. So don't wait. That goes for me to all of us. You cannot wait till you're sick. Oh, now I'm going to take herb. Or use that when the doctors listen, take this right here, and you go, no, I saw a YouTube. You got this side of the room, me watching these YouTube videos. Okay. YouTube. I saw a video. And the videos, okay. What verse was that? We have verse 21 now. Go ahead. Verse 21. And all such things as are either secret or manifest, them I know. Y'all see that right there? And all such things as are either secret or manifest, them I know. Watch. For, for wisdom, which is the worker of all things, taught me. Uh -huh. For in her is an understanding spirit. For in wisdom is an understanding spirit. Go ahead. Holy. Holy. This is a holy spirit. This is the holy spirit. Go ahead. One only. One only. Manifold. Manifold. Subtle. Subtle. Lively. Lively. Clear. Clear. Undefiled. Undefiled. Plain. Plain. Not subject to hurt. Not subject to hurt. Loving the thing that is good, quick, which cannot be let it, ready to do good. Ready to do good. Now, Joel chapter 2, verse 27. This is what the Lord said about these last days for, for us. This is what he said about the Holy Spirit being given to us in these last days. Joel chapter 2, verse 27. Mm -hmm. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. You and see that? Christians don't like that verse. That's like garlic. What is it? Garlic to a vampire? You say, you read it again. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. God is in the midst of Israel. Go ahead. And that I am the Lord your God. He's the Lord our God. And none else. Do you know what none else means? That don't mean he's the God of everybody. He said, I'm your God and none else. Christians hate that verse. They're offended at that verse. They'll curse you out because of that verse. Read on. And my people shall never be ashamed. And we shall never be ashamed. Read. And it shall come to pass. Watch this. Afterward, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Now, right there. The Christian church will start reading from verse 28. But they said, no, no, no. The all flesh is explained in verse 27. Moron, you lying Christians, you. Read. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Go ahead. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your old men shall dream dreams. Go ahead. Your young men shall see visions. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. The servants and handmaids are those of you who have, uh, um, what is it called? Employees. Go ahead. In those days. In those days. Will I pour out my spirit. Mm -hmm. Was that it? Yes, sir. Okay. What verse was that? That was verse 29. Go ahead. From there, give me 1 Corinthians 2. And 13. 
1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. So we don't speak in the wisdom that man's wisdom speaks. Go ahead. But which the Holy Ghost teaches. But what the Holy Ghost teaches us. This is what Christ was saying. The Holy Ghost would bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto thee. Read it again. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Man's wisdom teaches you that you came from a monkey. Man's wisdom teaches you that white folks are the epitome of eugenics. That's not what we speak. We don't teach that. Read it again. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, mm -hmm. but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. We compare spiritual things with spiritual. Give me John, go back to John 14, 26. John chapter 14, verse 26. Mm -hmm. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Now go back to 1 Corinthians 2 and 13. Yes, sir. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. That's why people always say, I don't understand what y'all are saying. Go ahead. But which the Holy Ghost teaches, uh -huh. comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Mm -hmm. But the natural man. The natural man means the carnal man, the sinful man. Go ahead. Receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. Why? For they are foolishness unto him. They're foolishness unto him. That's not what the white man taught me in school. That's not what I learned. Wait, wait, that stuff you're teaching. That People like that, they, they can't repent. They won't repent. Go ahead. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. It must be spiritually discerned. Give me wisdom of Solomon chapter one, verse five. Wisdom of Solomon chapter one, verse five. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. So just like with King Saul, just like we read in Luke 11, just like we read in second Peter. You receive the Holy Spirit and you become deceitful, a liar, still meddling in your sins. It says what? For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. The Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. That spirit will leave you. The spirit has left the building. Like these brothers and sisters that was with us, the Holy Spirit has left them. All they're doing now, and I'm talking about 2018, all they're doing now is parakeeting what we taught them. The spirit is gone, though. The spirit that they once had, read it again. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. It will flee deceit. Was that it? No, sir. Mm -hmm. And remove from thoughts that are without understanding. And remove from thoughts that are without understanding. You have no understanding. If you try to set someone up, um, you try to, what did they do? You accuse somebody and slander a man, and you know it's a lie. And you think the Holy Spirit is dwelling with you. You put someone's personal information on Facebook and think the Holy Spirit is dwelling with you. That's deceit. You're insane. And those people that follow you are insane. Was that the whole verse? No, sir. Go ahead. And will not abide. When unrighteousness cometh in. See that? And will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. So these brothers and sisters that left us and think the Holy Spirit is dwelling with them, how wrong you are. That's not biblical. You did much evil. You did much deceitful practices. And you think the Holy Spirit's with you. You and those idiots with you following you. The Holy Spirit has left the building. Was that it? Yes, sir. Give me wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 and verse 17. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9. I'm still looking for the scripture that says we can be deceitful and evil and the Holy Spirit stays. It's not in the Bible. Oh, yeah, the Coon James version, maybe. The Coon James. Thank you. Thank you. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 17. In thy counsel, who hath known, except Thou give wisdom and send thy Holy Spirit from above. 
The only way to know the counsel of God, the Holy Spirit must be sent within you. Read it again. In thy counsel, who have known, except thou give wisdom. Read, no, start from 14. Yes, sir. No, start from 13. I like 13. Yes, sir. Verse 13. For what man is he that can know the counsel of God? Or who can think what the will of the Lord is? For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable, and our devices are but uncertain. Why does it say miserable? That's what Christ said in Mark 7.31. What's in man? Go ahead. For the corruptible body presseth down the soul. This corruptible body that we each have, men and women, it, it, what does it say? It presses down our soul. Your soul is the inner you. The body, the flesh that we live in is contrary to our soul. The soul inhabits this body. But it's telling you that the corruptible body presses down your soul. Imagine walking around with a weight on your head. And you got to go upstairs and downstairs. You know how hard that becomes? So here, Solomon says, for the corruptible body presses down the soul. Go ahead. In the earthy tabernacle. The earthly tabernacle is our flesh. This body we all have. And the earthly tabernacle. Weigheth down the mind that museth upon many things. It weighs down our mind that muses upon many things. Meaning what? We try to think upon God's counsel. And we'll realize that earthly thoughts, wicked thoughts will enter in. That's what this verse is saying. Read 15 and one more again. Yes, sir. For the corruptible body presseth down the soul, in the earthy tabernacle weigheth down the mind that museth upon many things. Read on. And hardly do we guess aright at things that are upon the earth. We, we hardly even guess aright at things that are upon earth. I remember I was talking to, uh, uh, what are them dudes called in Brooklyn? Uh, five percenter. Five, you ever met these dudes in Brooklyn, five percenters? I don't know if they still got them around today. They still got them? Well, he's with his little girlfriend, and I'm, stand, I'm doing security. This is a long, long time ago. And they're standing next to me because one of them went into, they had a third friend that went to buy baby clothes. And he says, my brother, let me explain the Scientology, what did he say? The mathematics, the mathematics of the earth and the sun. I said, well, speak on, my brother, speak on. He says the earth, and he gave a big number, is three million, some kind of miles from the sun. I said, and his girl was like, you deep, brother. Man, you are deep. Whoa, boy. You deep, boy. And I said, I said, that's deep. I said, uh, what's the difference between where I'm standing and the curb right there? And he says, 15 feet, my brother. I said, 15 feet? Let's fact check this. So I come out from the booth and I do my little feet thing, the you know, one, two, three, and I count. I said, it's 26 feet. How wrong you are. And if you got that wrong, my brother, you don't know the distance from the earth to the sun, you idiot. You got to watch these little stupid five percenters. These people are stupid. Yeah, women get turned on by them. I don't know why. I'm like, what the hell is it? That ain't deep. This dude is stupid. <laughs> Read that again, verse 16. Yes, sir. And hardly do we guess aright at things that are upon earth. And with labor do we find the things that are before us. But the things that are in heaven, who have searched out? Who have searched out? Read. And thy counsel, who have known, except thou give wisdom and send thy Holy Spirit from above. The only way you can understand the counsel of God, the Holy Spirit must be sent from above. You got to pray for that. You must pray for that. From there, let's go to Luke 3.23. I want to talk about age just for a second. And the reason I want to talk about age is because in several IUIC schools, I've read reports that we have officers of 10 that are 18 and 19 years old. And they live in their mama house. And I'm like, uh, how was an 18-year-old? I remember we had that case in Jamaica. Brother gets married, and he set his wife over all the senior women. His wife was 21 years old. So the senior sis, one of the senior women said, what should go and teach me? 
Me got five kids. She now had one baby. What you going to teach me? How right she was, though. What can you teach her? We got to be mindful. Don't put children over grown people. They have no life experience, and I'm going to show you that, too. Numbers chapter 11, verse 16 and 17. Then we're going to jump. You don't want Luke to. Oh, I'm sorry. What did I say? Luke 3.23. Yes, give me that. Luke 3.23. I'm sorry. Luke chapter 3, verse 23. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. Now, when you see things in parentheses, that was added later. But what I wanted out of there is that Christ began to be about 30 years of age when he started to teach. Give me Numbers chapter 4 and verse 3. Numbers chapter 4, verse 3. From 30 years old and upward, even until 50 years old, all that enter into the host to do the work in the tabernacle of the congregation. Um, from there, give me Numbers chapter 8 and verse 23. So we just read from 30 to 50. They did the work inside the tabernacle. They're dealing with the sacrifices. Numbers 8, verse 23. Numbers chapter 8, verse 23. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This is it that belongeth unto the Levites, from 20 and 5 years old, and upward they shall go in to wait upon the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Now, we just read in Numbers 4, it said 30. So how come here it says 25 years old? What do y'all think those first five years was about? Training. Training. Read on. And from the age of 50 years, they shall cease waiting upon the service thereof and shall serve no more. Why did they have to stop at 50? Remember, they had something called heave offerings. Okay. You got bulls. I don't know how much a bull weigh. You need a few priests to lift, to heave that thing up. Here you got a 50-year-old man. Come on! Mm, mm, mm. The Lord said at 50, no, that, you don't do that. Use those young men. Let them lift that thing up. <laughs> so read that again. Verse 25. And from the age of 50 years, they shall cease waiting upon the service thereof and shall serve no more. Read. But shall minister with their brethren in the tabernacle of the congregation. So they didn't quit. It says, but shall minister with their brethren in the tabernacle of the congregation. Read. To keep the charge and shall do no service. They didn't do the service of lifting the heave offering and things like that. Thus shalt, thou, thus shalt thou do unto the Levites touching their charge. From there, from there. Give me Ecclesiasticus chapter 42 and 8. Ecclesiasticus chapter 42 and verse 8. Be not ashamed to inform the unwise and foolish and the extreme aged that contendeth with those that are young. Thus shalt thou be truly learned and approved of all men living. Read it one more again. Be not ashamed to inform the unwise and foolish. Sometimes you meet people that are unwise, they're foolish. It says don't be ashamed to inform them. Go ahead. And the extreme age. And the extreme age, because everybody that got age ain't smart. Everybody with age don't know the scriptures. Go ahead. That contendeth with those that are young. They are arguing with little kids, with young people. Go ahead. Thus shalt thou be truly learned and approved of all men living. Give me um, Numbers chapter 1 verse 3. Numbers chapter 1 verse 3. I believe this one is about war. Numbers chapter 1 and verse 3. From 20 years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Israel, thou and Aaron shall number them by their army. So at 20, they was able to go to war. At 20, they were able to go to war. So one thing that comes with age is, write this down, one thing that comes with age is experience. That's why you don't put an 18-year-old as an officer of 10. To be an officer, he may know the scriptures, but he lacks experience. 
you got officers of 10, you make him an officer of 10, but the men under him have women, have a wife and children. Been through some things. What is the 18-year-old going to guide them in? Nothing. They just came out their mama behind yesterday. Give me that wisdom of Solomon 8, verse 8, about with age comes experience. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 8. If, if a man desire much experience, she knoweth things of old, and conjectureth aright what is to come. She knoweth the subtilities of speeches, and can expound dark sentences. She foreseeth signs and wonders in the events of seasons and times. So the she here is wisdom. Like when you start at verse 1, it's talking about wisdom. If you desire ex much experience, wisdom know of things of old. Like many times we'll show, tell young men, they'll meet a woman. We'll say, uh, hey, that sister right there? Or maybe a sister. We'll say, uh-uh, he or she's not right for you. We've been down that road before. This is what's going to happen. And a young man or a young woman will go, well, I know more than you, and I'm not really listening to you, and didn't get married anyway. Right, right. And then all hell breaks loose in the marriage. They, Can I come for counsel? No, go talk to Captain Arell. Don't talk to me. Because <laughs> we warned you. You don't listen. Bruh, she shamed you in front of everybody. And then you were going to marry her after she put you to shame. You're an idiot. You are, don't talk to me. But I love her. I remember a young, one brother, he comes up, this is in New York. I said, uh, hey, he says, Bishop, I want to marry this sister over here. So I say, uh, who does she talk to out of the sisters? Who does she talk to? I want to know her circle of friends. Mm, nobody. No, you look around. No, 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 no. I said, is she in Titus 2? No, Bishop, she's not in Titus 2. Is she with daughters of Sarah? No, she is not. I said, that's a bad sign. I said, how long has she been with us? She's been with us about four years. I said, four years, and she don't talk to none of these senior women. I said, brother, my advice to you is don't marry her. But Bishop, I love her. And she loves me, and she runs over, but I love him too. I said, you are I'm saying to myself, these are two idiots right here. So they get married. They get married. I don't go to the wedding, by the way. I'm not going. I, I, this, this, ah! Anyway, I knew what was going to happen. All of a sudden, she wants to work. And he says, no, 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 no. I want you to stay home to be a wife at home, cook the food, clean for me. Da, 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 da. I got a good job. You don't need to work. He comes home. There's no food cooked. She's on Facebook every day. So they're fighting, they're arguing. She smacks him, he smacks her. He begins to punch her in the face. She runs out, and then she calls the cops, and you hear, Sepase, Maboule, help me, help me. There's voodoo books under the bed. He finds all kinds of witchcraft in the house. McDonald's every day. And we warned him. I personally warned him. Such is the case with IUIC. Now, like I said, I read reports. I call, I call the captains and deacons, what's going on? And I'm hearing the stupidity of some weddings that have not taken place, but they're going to be horror stories. Mark my words. They will be horror stories. I'm going to talk about them. Just get, wait till they get married. I'm going to wait a couple of months. Say, didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? I told you about that thing right there. Where are we at? Let me get back on topic. Wisdom of Solomon 8 and 8. Ecclesiastic, did we read it? We read Wisdom of Solomon 8 and 8, yes, sir. Okay, give me Ecclesiastes 34, 9 and 10. But I love her. She is my, okay. She is my soulmate. Mm -hmm. e Ecclesiasticus chapter 34 and verse 9. A man that have traveled. I heard y'all had a wedding and they didn't show up for five hours. Was it five hours? How long was it? What was it? Two hours. Two time. hours? Yes, yes, sir. No, no. See, two and change, I would have went home. See, that's I, I can't do it. I'm too old now. I've been around the radio, the radio, the rodeo before. 
That's that. I want you to look at me. Look how fabulous I am. No. How long are they late? Oh, I'll wait. I might wait 40 minutes. That's my cutoff point. After I'm home. I'm back in the car. Mm. I ain't playing. Hey, Bishop. Some folks drove from Charlotte the day before. So it's was, it was four hours here, then wait another two and a half for the wedding to start. I'm just saying. Just hey, to start. Hey, hey, but you know what the thing is. I'm Israel. You have to wait. But had it been the heathens um, place of, you know, wherever they were going. Because you're on a time clock. Right. You're on a time clock. Your behind would have been here. That's right. Exactly. So during the whole day, what is what are, what are, what is she doing during the whole, from, let's say she wake up at nine. From nine to, what time was the wedding? Uh, I think it was supposed to be three o'clock. It was supposed to be three. Okay. From nine to three, what's going on? Ain't you, they doing the makeup, they're getting dressed. That don't take that long. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't here. I'm just, this is, I'm just hearing things. I'm just like, what the hell is this? Where are we at? Ecclesiastes chapter 34 and verse 9. Go ahead. A man that hath traveled knoweth many things. You ever notice some of these uh, captains and some officers never travel? Never, ever travel. And there, one brother, this dude's simple as hell. He's going to call me up and says, Bishop, I want to uh, travel with you to uh, Ghana. I said, well, what are you doing locally? Are you traveling locally? No. I said, then you ain't going to Africa with us. Until you can build up your local area, don't think about going international with us. That's out of order. And don't call me no more, by the way. Click. <laughs> Read it again. A man that hath traveled knoweth many things, and he that hath much experience will declare wisdom. And he that hath much experience will declare wisdom. Some of these brothers and sisters will ignore what we've been through, what we've seen. They, I mean, ignore that. Okay. We don't. He that hath no experience knoweth little. That's, you. hey, everybody, you know who you are. If you don't travel, you know that this is talking about you. And listen. This is going into once you get the wisdom. I'm going to give an example of what I mean by that. One brother goes to Rome. And I said, you went to Rome? Tell me you saw the catacombs. He said, no. Me and my wife went on the boat and rolled down the water. I said, are you kidding me? I said, are you kidding me? You didn't go see the catacombs where our forefathers were at? No, she didn't want to go. She didn't, I mean, she, she didn't want to go. Did you mention it to her? Well, not exactly. Shut the hell up. Don't talk to me. Here go another brother. He went to Rome this while ago. I said, did you go see the catacombs? No. Uh, we put money in a fountain. You know, you throw money in a fountain. I said, are you kidding me? What the hell is this? I said, what is going on? Now that people are young. I understand that. But read that verse again. He that hath no experience knoweth little. He that hath no experience knoweth little. But even, he, even brothers in the military, y'all went many places in the military. But when you don't have the wisdom of the Lord, you don't really know what to look for. You don't know about the Behistine wall. You don't know about in Syria the, 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 the walls that had Moses painted on it. You don't know what to look for. You don't know which tomb to go into in the Valley of the Kings when you go to Egypt. But until you come into the truth, now when you go to these places, you know exactly what to look for. What are you going to say? Hey, also, for you brothers online, um, if you have senior le or leadership there, mm -hmm. the point man's there, but he's, at, he's advising you not to travel, that's a red flag. Right. Because we heard that too. Mm -hmm. Brothers will tell young men, no, you don't got to go nowhere. Where you got to go? No, you men get out and go travel. Go to New York. Go to the West Coast. Go anywhere. Glean something to bring it back and better the congregation that you're in. That's a red flag if they're telling you not to travel. Everybody, hey, I like that the setup captains the car has with the men. Well, they, he's, it's mandatory that they go out. Mm. All right? Crazy. So it should be the same thing in the, in, in the rest of you congregations. Travel. Exactly. Read that again. He that hath no experience knoweth little, but he that hath traveled is full of prudence. Read. When I traveled... I saw many things, and I understand more than I can express. You see that? From there, give me Proverbs 16 and 31. So what we're discussing is with age comes experience. 
Proverbs 16, 31. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 31. The hoary head is a crown of glory if it be found in the way of righteousness. The hoary head means the old head. You know, you call an OG. That's what that's talking about. Read it again. The hoary head is a crown of glory if it be found in the way of righteousness. If it be found in the way of righteousness. Now, that precepts with Leviticus 19.32. I'm going to show you something. Leviticus 19.32. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 32. Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head and honor the face of the old man and fear thy God. This is talking about men with wisdom. This is why we stand up and this is why. See, you know, you see this amongst other nations like amongst Moab and Ammon. When the older people come and they stand up. And black people go, why do they always stand up when the old people come in? Because they have respect and reverence for the elders. It's only black people who don't understand that. We're the only ones that don't understand honor. We have no, we just, we just, that's why they say we're on the bottom of the totem pole. When you think of honor, you don't think of nobody black. Just no, not that race. They're, they're terrible. Read it again. Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head and honor the face of the old man and fear thy God, I am the Lord. And guess what? That precepts would honor your father and your mother. Now, although he may not be your biological father, he's still an older man. You've got to give him reverence or older woman. We always reverence our elders, always. Now, give me the precept for the opposite about today. In Isaiah 3, I believe it is. It's not in my notes, but it just popped in my head. This is going to show you the modern day Negro from verse 4 and 5. Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 4. And I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. This is where we got kids in the neighborhood abusing everybody. Young adults, idiots, Running the neighborhood like they're princes and ruling over everybody. Go ahead. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. Here it comes. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. Look at that. Look at that. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, which are the older men and women, and the base Meaning you don't know nothing, you ain't nothing, you don't want to be nothing. It says against the honorable. The honorable are those men and women of age that have done things in the community. But the low-life black boy will behave himself uh, 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 against the honorable. No respect at all. That's today. This, what we're reading is today. Verse 12, please. Verse 12. As for my people, children... Are their oppressors? That's what we're reading in verse four and five. Mm -hmm. And women rule over them, right? Because these women are single women. They got kids, but they have no man. Can't keep a man. Go ahead. Oh my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy path. So we've been, we're being led by single women and kids. That's today's society right now. Only in the black and Latino community. You don't see that with no other race. Only us. That's how you know we're the Israelites. From there, Job 12 and 12. And if this is you, just suck it up. Take it. Take that. Take that. Take that. Job chapter 12, verse 12. With the ancient is wisdom and length of days understanding. See that? Read it again. With the ancient is wisdom, and in length of days, understanding. With the ancient is wisdom, and in length of days, understanding. Because over time, you accumulate wisdom. Okay, from there. Give me Job 32, 7 to 9. Because everybody that got age don't have wisdom. Job chapter 32, verse 7. I said, days should speak. Days should have taught you something. A multitude of years should teach wisdom. And multitude of years should have taught you wisdom. But there is a spirit in man. But 
There is a spirit in man. Go ahead. And the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. And the all and this inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. That's the only way you need the inspiration of the Almighty. Read. Great men are not always wise. Great men are not always wise. Neither do the aged understand judgment. Neither do the aged understand wisdom. Now, there were a few exceptions in the Bible, uh, like uh, Moses. Give me Exodus 7 and 7. Actually, before we get that, give me the one in Acts 7 where it says Moses was learned in all the wisdom of Egypt. Give me that one. I'll start there. Then we're going to go to Exodus 7 and 7. Acts chapter 7, verse 22. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. And was mighty in words. He did not stutter. He did not stammer. Because I keep hearing Christians say that. He was well learned in Egyptian tongue. He was not learned in the Hebrew tongue. Tongue. That's why he said, I can't speak well. In Hebrew, he was talking about. But he did not stutter. He did not stammer. Read it again. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. So to be learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, he had to learn about all their gods. He had to learn about the agriculture of Egypt. He had to learn all that. Now, when we go to Exodus 7 and 7. Exodus chapter 7, verse 7. And Moses was four score years old. That's 80 years old. Moses was 80 years old. Go ahead. And Aaron four score and three years old mm -hmm. when they spake unto Pharaoh. So when the Lord sent Moses, he was 80 years old. 80. So that's an exception. Because he had to get rid of all that Egyptian stuff he learned and be born again. Yes, Moses had to be born again. So now watch this. Write this down. No, no. Let's go to uh, Ecclesiasticus 25 first before I say that. Ecclesiasticus 25 and 3. Ecclesiasticus chapter 25 verse 3. If thou hast gathered nothing in thy youth, how canst thou find anything in thine age? Meaning it's hard, it's difficult. You ever meet some dudes, some brothers and sisters, they go to school and they cut class. Some of us was like that. Cut class. We wasn't about nothing, didn't want nothing, didn't want to be nothing but a drug deal or whatever. Then they end up on the corner wearing, you ever see these people wearing a Statue of Liberty costume, holding a sign, making $5 an hour. And you'd be like, yo, I remember you in school. And they, they feel shame. That might be some of you sitting in here. Read it again. If thou hast gathered nothing in thy youth, how canst thou find anything in thine age? If you wasn't about nothing when you were young, some kids are like that. They ain't about nothing, don't want to be nothing. All they want to do is play video games. I remember my, 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 my older son goes, Dad, you never play video games with me. I said, no, I don't play video games. He goes, why? I said, well, back in high school, back in high school, it was... Eighth grade, eighth grade, I believe it was. That's around when Pac-Man, remember Pac-Man? It came out. And across the street in a pizza shop, they had the first Pac-Man machine. So we would all go over there and put our quarter in and play Pac-Man. All day. Miss class and all that. So I go home and I fell asleep and had a dream. I had a dream I'm playing Pac-Man, Pac-Man, Pac-Man. And all my friends around me are growing up, and I'm still the same age. And I'm playing Pac-Man. They're growing up, and they're getting suits and ties, and they're becoming this and becoming that. And I was a homeless man on the street corner asking for quarters to play Pac-Man. I woke up. That was eighth grade. I said, oh, shoot. I never played video games again in my life. I said, that ain't happening to me. No, 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 no. My kids be at home. You want to play daddy? No. And I'm going to warn you about playing that damn stuff right there. You better get your life right. Get your mind right. You're going to be a bum. 
<laughs> give, give me Sirach 618. Ecclesiasticus chapter 6 and 18. Ecclesiasticus chapter 6 and verse 18. My son, gather instruction from thy youth up. See that? We, I tell my kids like I'm telling y'all. Gather instruction from your youth up. Go ahead. So shalt thou find wisdom till thine old age. So will you find wisdom till thine own old age. Okay. Now, write this down. Write this down. Before becoming a leader, your success depends on your spiritual growth, your mental development in keeping God's laws and having the fruits of the spirit. I know I said a lot, so I'm going to say it again. Before becoming a leader, your success depends on your spiritual growth, your mental development. Your mental development in keeping God's laws. And having the fruits of the Spirit. Now, I worded it like that for a reason, because the, the Pharisees, they knew God's laws. But did they have the fruits of the Spirit? No, they did not. Let's get uh, Galatians 5.22. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Lo now, wait, 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 wait. is love. People read that and think it's talking about sexuality. It is not talking about sex. Give me the precept. Give me 1 John, either 5 and 3 or 2 and 2 John, verse either one. Yes, sir. 1 John, chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. That's love. Give me 2 John, verse 6. 2 John, verse 6. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. Y'all see that? So that's what love is making reference to. It's not talking about sex. It's talking about keeping God's commandments. So when we go back to Galatians 5, 22 again. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. So that's the first thing. Now, I'm going to say this. I know everybody in here, we got different learning curves. It took me a month to memorize 1 John 5 and 3, where it is, and 2 John 6. I remember, this was years ago. My learning curve is not quick and speedy as a lot of brothers. We, you got to know where you're at in this truth. And you cannot compare yourself to the brother next to you. I remember in the academy, it I have a part, he got dyslexia, but he also has a photographic memory. He'll read something, he read the patrol guide one time and can remember everything in there. But me, I was like, what the frick? I'm cursing, but I can't curse. I'm like, what the hell? And I'm up all kinds of night till four in the morning, writing stuff down, mad as hell. I mean, I went through it, I passed it and all that, but his time was easier for him than it was for me. But I, that's my learning curve. Some brothers learn through listening. Some brothers can't read. I tell the brothers that cannot read, well, definitely, there's schools that help older people read. And until then, listen to audio. They got Bible audios. You can listen to it. There's a lot of things you can do. But you got to know what your learning curve is. Everyone is not the same. So read again, Galatians 5.22. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. If you have those qualities, against such there is no law that somebody can say, you're breaking this law. No, because the first thing you're doing is keeping the commandments. That's love. 
The next thing are those sets of attributes, those characteristics that become part of your character. Okay? From there. What? Write this down. Write this down. Write this down. The fruit of the Spirit must become your character. The fruit of the Spirit must become your character. And a character is like a habit. A habit is something that comes second nature. We can read scripture all day. But until you decide to apply, you're just reading or memorizing. Let me say that again. We can read scripture all day. But until you decide to apply, you're just reading or memorizing. And because you memorize something, don't mean you are applying. You're just a very good parrot. And once you become a leader, it's about growing those around you. I remember I was talking to Captain Zakar last week. You can always tell a good leader by the men around him. I was in, I don't want to name the school, but I was in one IUIC school, and I was asking the second, the third, the fourth, and the officers certain things in the scriptures, and I was asking them about certain things in the congregation. The number two, number three would always say to me, let me ask brother so-and-so, officer so-and-so, because he was the number one. I asked the officers. They go, uh, let me get back to you. Let me ask uh, this brother, the number one brother. I said, what about what's going on with these brothers? This is, uh, let me ask this. I said, wait, stop. So I called him around. I said to the number one, I said, you're doing a terrible job as being a leader over these men. I said, pardon my French, but these men are practically idiots without you. And you have people have something called, what is it called, job security? I'm not going to teach you, so you always got to depend on me. Y'all ever met people like that? That's wicked as hell. That is wicked as hell. If the men around you are idiots, you're doing a terrible job as a leader. I'm telling y'all straight, okay? One thing that weak leaders often do, weak leaders always surround themselves with spiritually and mentally weak men. Write that down. Weak leaders always surround themselves with spiritually and mentally weak men. The deacons will tell you. I told them in the beginning. If you're weak, you don't be around me. If you're a yes man, you cannot be around me. Because sometimes, you know you can make uh, long-term decisions based on short-term feelings. And what I mean, you get mad and you might say something that will be long-term and it could be 100% wrong. You only said it because you said it out of anger. Emotions. So I said, I need men around me that will that's able to correct me if I, if I go off or when I go off. I get mad. I say stupid stuff when I get mad. I, so I say, I don't need yes men around me. Some of y'all are like brothers around you who are idiots. You like mentally weak men around you who don't know nothing. You like men around you who will never correct you. Women are like that. I give an example. A sister corrects another sister. They might be friends. She'll correct her. She'll never talk to her ever again. Never. And she'll look for the new sister that just walks through the door and says, she's my friend. I see it all the time from school to school to school. She corrected me so she ain't my friend. I don't want no accountability for nothing. Even with the senior sister, I don't want to talk to her. I don't want to deal with her. What are you going to say? So, weak leaders lead sheep, strong leaders lead lions. I want you to understand that. Weak leaders lead sheep, strong leaders lead lions. I only want lions around me. If you're not a lion, stay the hell away from me. Go hang around uh, some of these officers right there. Look at their faces, look at their faces. Go hang around them, don't hang around me. You mad? You mad, you mad. <laughs> hey, if the shoe don't fit, it don't fit. There's water off your back. But if it is you, put that shoe on. 
Wear it. Put the pump on. Put that pump on. That's your shoe right there. Give me Matthew 25. Matthew 25. We're going to start at verse 1. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. Ah, the kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto ten virgins. Give me 2 Corinthians 11 and 2 to explain the virgins. We've gone over this several times before, but we're going to go over it again. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. See that? He presents us, the nation of Israel, as a chaste virgin unto Christ. So these ten virgins represents the elect of Israel that's coming into this truth. That's what these ten virgins represent. Men and women. Now, Revelation 14, 4, I got to go there, I got to go there. Revelation chapter 14, verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women. Whoa, wait a minute. Read it again. These are they which were not defiled with women. Go ahead. For they are virgins. That's the part I wanted, for they are virgins. What does that mean? We've been espoused to Christ as a chaste virgin. We're not defiled by women. So what does that mean? They don't have wives? Peter had a wife. Many of the prophets had wives. Isaiah had a wife. They called his wife the prophetess. Moses had a wife. So it can't mean that. What does it mean? Think about from the time of Adam and Eve. Was Adam defiled by listening to his wife Eve? Oh, yes, he was defiled. And the Most High said to Adam, because you listen to your wife, this is the curse that's come upon all the earth. So the Lord is looking for men who's not going to be manipulated guided by a woman who comes with a different doctrine or philosophy. That's what the Lord is looking for. He's looking for men, lions, not sheep. Well, how do you know if you're a sheep? You're a sheep if your wife humiliates you and you have to apologize. You are not a lion. You're a kitty cat. Why don't the woman stand up and apologize for herself? I'm going to apologize for it. No, no, no. You're a kitty cat. Stay the hell away from me. My wife do something stupid. She don't want to stand up and speak for herself. I told her, I will be, you do some evil, I will be your worst enemy on earth. I wish you would. I don't, I don't play stupid games with women. I don't, I don't. I told y'all when we was coming in, when we started uh, well, let me word it this way. As studying the scriptures about women dress code, the, my wife used to wear these damn spandex, and we went into a store, and Ephraimites was talking about her camel toe. Oh, I was furious, and it was going in Spanish, but I was mad as hell. So I got home, I said, listen, 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 listen. This is out of order. You cannot be dressing like that. Yeah, She goes to work. So I'm sitting there just mad as hell. I get me a pair of scissors, a big pair. I go in her closet. I get all the jeans and the spandex, throw them on the table, and I begin to cut them up. I cut every last one of them up and threw them in the garbage. I waited till she came home. She comes home. It was, uh, I forgot how much, I think $50. It might have been 25 I was broke then, but I don't know what it was. I left the money on the table. I said, listen, there's some money on the table. Look in your closet for your pants and all that. I said, it's, they're all in the garbage. You're not wearing those no more. I said, now you could take this money that's here. You have a decision to make right now whether or not we will continue. You can go out, take that money, and buy you another pair of pants, or you could buy you a skirt, and then we're going to be happy. That's how I roll. I'm not a kitty cat. Some of y'all are kitty cats with women. I'm not a kitty cat. And here another, I got another story. She gonna have a, uh, this is years ago, this is before, this long time ago, long time ago. A baby shower on a new moon. A baby shower on a new moon? My father already put $50 down on the place in Brooklyn. I don't care. 
This is God's day. This is not your day. Because you know in a baby shower, they give the woman that big wicker chair, and she sits there like the queen of heaven. And all the women praise her and give gifts. So her father, she tells her daddy. Her daddy called me up. Look, my man, I already put money down. He curse. He can curse. Her father can curse. I said, listen, I give you that little money back. I don't give a dag on. So I go down to the, her, father, her father's house. And I give him the money. I said, look, here's the money for the, for the place. So she had the kids with her. She goes, and I'm walking out. She says, aren't you going to speak to your kids? I said, no, those are your kids. I'm going to go have some more if you decide to go with this baby shower. I don't roll like some of you dudes. Y'all are, some of y'all are kitty cats. Women will take up. Let me be nice. She'll take a crap on your head. And make you apologize. That ain't me. And that's not the way we're being trained up in this truth. Christ wasn't like that. Our forefathers wasn't like that. But some of you weak, effeminate men sitting in here with purple shirts, you know who you are. It's with the woman. So she embarrassed me. So what? And you stay your behind over there. The hell is this? Read that again. Verse 4 These are they which were not defiled with women. This is what the Lord is looking for. If you men ain't like that, the Lord ain't dealing with you. Go back to T.D. Jakes. Ain't he down a block? Who's down a block? Creflo's down a block. Hand in your purple shirt and go join Creflo. What is it? World, world changing ministry. Got women eating a bowl of soup on your head. The hell is this? Go ahead. Read on. Read it again. These are they. Which were not defiled with women. Now, I'm not talking about abuse to women. Because I know some of y'all might have been gangsters. You might take this the other way. Some of you might have been gorilla pimps. You know, I just found out what a gorilla pimp was. That's that dude that beat the crap out of a woman. I ain't talking about that. Ain't nobody talking about being a gorilla pimp. But they do got their women in order. I don't know how the hell. I'm like, how the hell I get all these women? These women. Yeah, with the fist. The power of the fist. We ain't talking about that. That ain't how Christ or the apostles or the prophets got down. Read that again. These are they which were not defiled with women, mm -hmm. for they are virgins. They are virgins. They are not corrupted by the philosophies or manipulation of women. Go ahead. Oh, I got another one. Oh, I got another one. I'm in a hospital. Got a story to tell y'all. I ain't going to say the name because some of y'all know him. So I don't want to embarrass the brother too bad. He gets married. He gets married. The first thing he does is puts the wife's name on the deed to the house. Brothers, that's a no-no. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. The next thing the wife does is move in her two grown adult children. One of which has children. Nobody work. Nobody pay bill. Didn't tell him nothing. And he got to pay for everything. Damn. I'm sitting there with the ivy in my arm. said, what the mother? I'm mad as hell. I'm saying some words, but I can't say it on the mic. The house snatcher. So you, 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 that's what it is. Because now, as all hell has broken loose, she going to get, Eddie, I want half. I need half. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Read that again. These are they. It couldn't be me. It could not be. I'm burning the house down. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I can't do it. I can't. Do, no, no, no. I'm not struggling my whole life. And this evil woman get half. I'm going to wait till you go to sleep. And I'm putting a gap. No, let me be quiet. I'm sorry. <laughs> They're going to take that. See, 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 see. I told you them niggas is wicked. I can't do it. These but, are. But, 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 listen, brothers, listen. Some women are good with money. Some. Not all women are good with money. So even if she gets half of what you got, what she got, it will be gone very soon because most women like to spend. 
splurge thing. This is what I've noticed over my years. They're not that sa- the saving kind to put this where it belongs or invest. That's not them. Very few of them are like that. There's some, there's some sisters like that, but it's very few, very few. So don't worry, brother. She might have half, but her half going to be gone. Just invest your part, what you got, and use it wisely. And listen to counsel when we tell you don't marry that sister. She belonged to the streets. Bringing her two grown kids in with children, and you got to pay for every damn thing. He playing playing granddaddy for for grown folks. Read that again. Revelation chapter 14, verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women. I know another one. I got another one. I got another one. The brother marries a sister with grown adult. No, they ain't grown adult. They're 16, 17, 18-year-old kids. We said, brother, you sure you want to take that on? I love her. I could do it, Bishop. That's all, no problem. Okay. I don't agree with this. Go ahead. They get married. Whatever. Him and the wife get into an argument. He begins to curse the wife out. Guess what the 17 year old, 18 year old, or 19 year old did? They, they, they put hands on him. They get the pow. You talk to my mama like that, nigga, and stomp him out. Three of them. He's toe up from the flow up. And Bishop, they living in his house. They living in his house. Eating up his food. Eating up his food. Damn. Ain't no way, bro. Ain't no way, boy. Ain't no way. Boy, no way, boy. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. I can't do it. That ain't me. You can't sleep at night, right? You got to sleep with one eye open. The hell is this? These little niggas gonna come here and beat the hell out of me. What's that calling military where they beat you? The pillow party. The hell is this? Mm-mm, ain't no way, boy. Ain't no way. But some of you, some of you online too, this is your story. Why Bishop is telling my story? I can't. I didn't say your name, bro. Nobody know who you are. You know who you are, though. Read that again. I'm sorry. Revelation chapter 14, verse 4. These are they. Let me tell you about FU money. There's something called FU money. Some women got FU money. FU money means they got money to say, F you, I don't need you, I'm out. One brother, the voodoo brother with the voodoo wife, he says, I do not want her to have a job because if she works, she might leave me. I said, then she's not for you, bro. She for the streets, if that's your mind. What does Proverbs 31 say? Give me that, give me that. You know what I want, Yuri? Please get me the right verse. I'm going to help you brothers out with the F you money. I'm going to help y'all. Sisters, I'm about to help y'all out too. You got it, Yuri? Yes, sir. What verse are we going to? Verse 11. Go ahead. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 11. The heart of her husband doeth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. He has no need of spoil. He ain't worried about her committing adultery, fornication, nothing. He all right. She good. Now, jump down where it says, let her hands. I can't quote. I'm not even looking at it. It says, let her own. Something about. Yes, sir. Verse 31. Go ahead. Verse 31. Give her of the fruit of her hands. Give her of the fruit of her hands. If she work, let her benefit from it. Go ahead. And let her own works praise her in the gates. Sisters, let your own works praise. Now, there's a couple of things I want out of that. Remind me about, um, I'm about to forget any second now. You know, I got short-term memory. Remind me, I just forgot already. What the hell is this? <laughs> read it again. Read it again. Let me hear Give her of the fruit of her hand. Okay, I'll start there. Go ahead. And let her own works praise her in the gates. Let her own works praise her in the gates. Remind me of that. Okay, F you money. The Bible, what we just read, is to let her own, uh, give her of the fruit of her hands. Let her work, brother. If, she, if that's what she's inclined to do, some women don't want to work. Oh, I got another story. One brother, his wife worked in the bank. She made, how much did she make, he told me. He said about $19 an hour. Someone has to tell, I forgot, something like that. But the moment she got married to him, you know what she did? 
quit. I don't ever have to work again. Red flags with that. Red flags with that. Another thing, another story. I got a million stories. I told you this one before. Brother's courting his sister. She tells him, she asks him, what do you do for a living? He tells her. She says, what kind of car do you drive? He tells her. She begins Googling the car. She goes, oh, that's a nice car. Now, the brother did have a nice car. It was a Lexus. Very nice car. She Googles it. She says, oh, I like that. He says, what do you do? She says, I work at a bank. I work at a bank. He says, what do you want to do when we get married? She says, well, the first thing I want to do is get a tummy tuck. A tummy tuck? Not go to the gym. She wants a tummy tuck. But you already said she, 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 when she gets married, she already told him she don't want to work. So guess who's going to pay for the tummy tuck? Him. Then she says, and I want to get a few things done. To, now, this isn't the truth. I ain't talking about in the world. I'm talking about IUIC sisters. Yeah, she got fringes on and a big book blue. She wanted a few things, a nip and tuck. I says, when the brother calls me and tell her, tells me this, I said, kick her to the curb. That's not marriage material. I said, you're going to be paying. I said, the next thing she's going to want the breast is did. She want a BBL. I said, no, that's, that, that, she ain't repented. Leave her alone. So he told her she got mad as hell. It's okay. Now, what I should remind me of? Let her own works praise her. Brothers, you get with a sister. You got to find, what are her works in the body? If she has no works, that's a red flag. Don't marry her. I'm telling y'all. Read it again. It says what? Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Let her own works speak for her. That's what it's saying. She has no work. She does nothing in here. She just sits there. Don't marry that. You've been warned, brothers. You've been warned. Now, where are we at? Because I told so many stories, I forgot what I'm talking about. You want Matthew 25 again? Yes, thank you. Matthew 25 and 1. Am I going to get through this? All right, let me rush through it. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. The bridegroom is Christ. Give me that Isaiah 65, 62 and 5, please. The bridegroom is Christ. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 5. Mm -hmm. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. So shall thy God rejoice over thee. That's Christ. That's what it's talking about. Okay. So now, in Matthew 25, go back there again. Yes, sir. And verse 1, it said they took their lamps, right? Red lamps? Yes, sir. Proverbs. The lamps is Proverbs 6.23. Write that down. That's going to help us get through the whole chapter. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp. See that? The commandment is a lamp. Those ten virgins each had a lamp. Go ahead. And the law is light. And the law is light. Was that it? And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. That's going back. That's going back. And we're going to kind of rush through this, Yuri. Yes, sir. You're right. But go ahead. Matthew chapter 25, verse 2. And five of them were wise. And five were foolish. Five were wise, five were foolish. What made them wise? Give me Sirach 11.15. What made five of them wise? Sirach 11.15. Ecclesiasticus. You said 11? So sorry. Yes, 11.15. Ecclesiasticus chapter 11, verse 15. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the law are of the Lord Love and the way of good works are from him. See that? Wisdom. That's why five of them were wise. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the law. That's what people always forget. I hear brothers quick to say knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of what? The law. That's why five were wise. Then it said five were foolish. Give me Jeremiah 4.22. Why were five foolish? 
Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 22. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children. When you look up sottish, that means stupid. Sottish means stupid. Go ahead. And they have none understanding. And they have no no understanding of what? Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the law. Was that it, Yuri? No, sir. Go ahead. They are wise to do evil. Be wise to do evil. I'll give you another example. Do I want to talk about that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to talk about this one. I got the report. Trucker, brother, goes across state lines with nine Chicanos in illegal in his truck to get him across the border. Nine. Not one, because when I first read this, I said, maybe it was one. Maybe he just took the chance, and I found out it's $6,000 ahead. And he had nine. How much is that, 54 k That's some money right there. Right. His first story was that he didn't know they were in the truck. Now, not the trailer. Not the, the, it's in the cab right behind the driver. They all, nine of them. Just lying. Whole bunch of, I ain't going to say that. They, you know, in California, there's a lot of them. <laughs> so, anyway, you can't make this stuff up. Covetousness. Read that again, Yuri, please. They are wise to do evil. Our people are, and to put nine in there, that means you've done it before. You're comfortable. You've never been stopped. So now I'm going to take the chance and put nine in there. Go ahead. But to do good, they have no knowledge. That's why five were foolish. To do good, they have no knowledge. They got, they got the commandments, but they were not doing what? Applying. They were not applying. Go back to Matthew 25. Matthew chapter 25, verse 3. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. See, that took no understanding with them. Come on. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. See that? But the wise took oil with them in their lamps. They took them commandments and applied them commandments. What verse you at? Verse 5. Go ahead. While the bridegroom... Wait, I didn't get... Let me give you the one for oil. Proverbs 21, 20. I'm sorry. There's a precept for the oil. Proverbs 21, 20, and 21. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 20. There is treasure to be desired. And oil in the dwelling of the wise. And oil in the dwelling of the wise. But a foolish man spendeth it up. He that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life. Okay. Let's righteousness go on and honor. Let's go on back. What verse we at in Matthew 25? Verse 4 now. Go ahead. Talk about verse 5. Verse 5. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. So Christ is the bridegroom. While he tarried, meaning what? He tarried to return. Okay? Meaning what? He, his, his coming, his second coming was delayed. Okay? Give me um, Isaiah 29, 10 to explain. We slumbered and slept. We all slumbered and slept. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 10. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and have closed your eyes the prophets and your rulers the seers hath he covered so we all slumbered and slept right we had no understanding give me Jeremiah 17 4 Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 4 and thou even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. So not only would Jeremiah, who would come back in the last days, discontinue from his heritage, but all of us, we discontinue from my heritage. Go ahead. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. So that's what it means we all slumbered and slept. We slumbered and slept not knowing the word of God, not knowing who we are, what we are, believing we're African-Americans, Puerto Ricans, and Mexicans. Okay, go on back now. Matthew chapter 25, verse 6. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Now the cry that was made goes with Malachi 4 and 5. Watch this. Malachi chapter 4, verse 5. Behold, 
I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, we always teach that is Abba Bivens because he was the first one that taught that blacks and Latinos are the Israelites. He went throughout many Indian reservations. Okay, he accepted Christ as the Messiah. So he was the first one, although he came from the commandment keepers. They didn't, they didn't accept Christ, and he did not accept Northern Kingdom at all. This is why we say Elijah was Abba Bivens. Not me. Let's get that out there. Not me. Uh, Abba Bivens. Read that. Verse 6. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. So he would turn the hearts of the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to the children. We're the children. Go ahead. And the heart of the children. And the heart of the children, our minds. To their fathers. Yeah, you're not Negroes. You're the Israelites. The Bible speaks of. You're not Native American Indians or Puerto Ricans. You are the Israelites. The Bible speaks of. That's what he was doing. Go ahead. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Let's go on back now. Matthew chapter 25 verse 6. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. They all, all ten virgins woke up to the truth of who they are and they trimmed their lamps. Give me that in Romans 13, 11. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. And that knowing the, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. You see that part there, cast off the work of darkness. When we woke up, we had to cast off the works of darkness. Meaning what? Adultery, evil thoughts, covetousness, stealing, whatever it is. We had to cast that off. That's trimming your lamp. That's preparing yourself. Go back to Matthew 25, please. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 8. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Give us of your oil, your understanding, because our lamps are gone out. We don't know what you know. We don't know the commandments the way you brothers do. Go ahead. <clears throat> but the wise answered, saying, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. You see that part where it says, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. That's Isaiah 55 and 1. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 1. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. So that's, you got to go to the Lord. That's why we, at the beginning of the lesson, remember we talked about if any of you lack wisdom, you got to go to the Lord. That's James 1 and 5. We read that earlier. You must go to the Lord. You got to pray like we read in Sirach about pray for the Holy Spirit. You, that's something man can't give you. Only the Lord can give you that thing. What verse are we in now? Verse 10. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 25, verse 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. See that? Now watch this. Watch this. Give me Mark 13 and 35. It says, while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Mark 13, 35. Mark chapter 13, verse 35. Watch ye therefore. For ye know not when the master of the house cometh at even or at midnight or at the crock crowing or in the morning. That was it? That was verse 35. So yes, it's letting you know, we don't know when the Lord's going to return. He gave us signs. He gave us the scriptural evidence that things must occur before he returns. Like pestilence must come. War must come. And tribulation upon the Israelites must come before he returns. He told us that. It's clear. So from there, read on. Verse, back to Matthew. Back to Matthew, yes. Matthew chapter 25, verse 11. 
Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. These are the foolish virgins. Go ahead. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. He said, I don't know you. Wow, that's, that's a cold deal. Look at Matthew 7, 21. I don't know you. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Right. The will of, his, of our Father. Give me that Psalms 40 and 8, please. He that doeth the will. Psalms chapter 40 and verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. That's the will of God. His law. His law. Go back to Matthew, Matthew 7. Chapter 25 and verse no, Matthew 12. Matthew 7. Matthew 7, 21. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Go ahead. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? You see that? Have we not prophesied in thy name? That's for the brothers that... They hang on to the divine name. Yahweh, 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 Basham, Yahweh, Shai, but they are not keeping the commandments. None, I'm going to say this. None of the prophets stood on the street prophesying or teaching that we're going to rape children or women. Not one. Isaiah didn't do it. It talked about the other nations doing it, but not the, not the elect. Imagine we with Christ saying, hey, uh, hold on, Lord. Uh, I see this good-looking white woman over here. I'll be right back. No, that's not happening. That's not biblical to do that. Or concubines. They did not stand on the street and talk about having concubines. They taught repentance. That's what they taught. They taught about changing your life, the coming kingdom. And they prophesied what is to come. That's what we are to do. And don't worry about ki people kissing your boot. The prophets did not go around prophesying, hey, 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 I want you to kiss my boot. That's not what they did, brothers. Don't envy that. Don't look at that. That's in the coming kingdom. Give me that. Give me that scripture, as a matter of fact. Revelation, uh, is it 3-9? Give me that. That's in the kingdom. That's not now. Revelation chapter 3, verse 9. Behold. I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Notice it says, I will make them come and worship before thy feet. That's the Lord doing that. And that's in the kingdom. That's not talking about on this side. On this side, you got child molesters, pedophiles, and deviants. One of the brothers went to um, Canada to teach. I ain't going to say his name. Y'all all know who he is, though. He was a captain. And the Edomite came, and he said, hey, this is a while ago. He said, kiss my, kiss my boot. The Edomite went. Not only did the Edomite kiss his boot, he licked his boot. Then the Edomite spread his legs and said, do me. I said, don't put that video up. Burn it. Throw it in the trash. And brother, don't you ever do that again. We're going to act like this never happened. Yeah, they kiss your boot, but they're still in rulership. What's the irony behind that? Those are deviants. When you, those are broken spirits. When you see these homeless, it's usually homeless Edomites that want to kiss your boot, lick your boot. They want something in return. Believe me, if you tell them to do anything deviant, they will do it. <laughs> anyway, where are we at? We back at uh, Matthew seven twenty two. Yeah, read that again. Matthew chapter seven verse twenty two. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Ye that work iniquity. Do y'all realize Judas Iscariot had the Holy Spirit in the beginning? He did many wonderful works. Healing the sick. He did all that. 
casting out devils. But in the end, he was just like King Saul. He let his sin get the best of him. And he was put to death. Put to death. Okay? Go back to Matthew 25. Matthew chapter 25. I'll read verse 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. I don't know you. Why? Because you got caught up, trapped up in your sins that you were meddling with. Imagine. Remember, Judas Iscariot was what? What was he, brothers? Oh, no, no. What was his sin? I mean. I heard in the back. A thief. That's what's his old life. He was a thief. But he never got over that. You would think he would go to Christ and say, Lord, I'm battling with a covetous spirit. Can you take it from me? That's what a wise man would have did. Lord, can I have some scriptures to help? Uh, give me the understanding so I can overcome the spirit that I'm battling with. But no, he made like everything was all good, all gravy. Everything's good. Read on now. Verse 13. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Right. So again, he gave us signs. He let us know that there would be pestilence, which is diseases. He let us know there would be wars and rumors of war. He let us know there would be great tribulation upon the Israelites. We didn't get to that part yet, but it's coming. Read on. Verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Now, here's the next parable. Give me the precept for that in Acts 1, 8 through 11. When it says he went into a far country and delivered unto them his goods. Watch this. Acts 1, 8 through 11. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So they would go out and teach, do the work. The apostles never sat around and did nothing. They traveled. This is why we try to tell you, men, get your passports. But you have to start locally. Travel from the, to the next city. Start there. And then you, can, you start locally and you extend globally. Go ahead. And when he had spoken these things, which they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. See that part right there? He was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. That's a chariot. Go ahead. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Now let's go back to Matthew 25 again. Yes, sir. So now we got the understanding on that. Read Matthew, that verse again. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. So Christ... Went up to the heaven, but before he left, he told them they would be endowed with power. They would get the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. And unto one, he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. So now, look at that. Some brothers and some sisters have five talents, five gifts. Some have two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. Give me that precept in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit to another faith by the same spirit 
to another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, discerning of spirits, to another, diverse kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh the, that one in that selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. See that part? Dividing to every man severally as he will. Meaning the Lord is the deciding factor. Some brothers, some sisters have more gifts than others. You can't take that away from them. It is what it is. All we can do is learn. Okay, don't hate. Don't be a hater. Just learn. Hey, bro, how'd you do that? Can you show me how to do that? Learn. Some brothers say, sit there and sisters be jealous as hell. Go back to Matthew 7 and read that again. 7 or 25. Mm-hmm. Chapter 7. I mean, chapter 25. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man, according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. So your ability is based upon, number one, number one, your understanding of scriptures. Behind that comes the various gifts that you may have to help expound or spread the word of God. Everybody understand that? Read on. Verse 16. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. So no matter, notice it says he that had two gained other two. He had five gained other five. Why? Because they took heed to brothers and sisters around them and learned. And other people came in and learned. Read. Verse 18. But. What, he, what verse you at? Verse 18. Go ahead. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Wait, wait. He went and hid his Lord's money. So here's a precept. Give me Mark 4 and verse 19. Let me show what that's talking about. So the talent that the Lord gave him with the spirit, he hid the money. Mark chapter 4 verse 19. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. Becoming unfruitful, unfruitful means you hid the talent. You didn't do what you were supposed to do. Why? Read the verse again. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things. And the lust of other things. I want to pause there. The lust of other things. Your thing might not be riches. It might be booty. The lust of, that's the first thought. Whoremongers. Whores. Sex. That's all some of you want. That's the lust of other Or oh, power. Sometimes it's power. Preeminence. Read that again. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word. Choke the word of God. And it becometh unfruitful. All that you had at one time studied, you've become unfruitful now. Unprofitable. Go back to Matthew 25. Matthew chapter 25, verse 18. But he that had received one went and dig in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Now, I don't know about y'all, but that's what I want to hear when I stand before the Lord. Well done! Thou good and faithful servant. That's all I want to hear. Read on. Thou has been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Mm. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, well done, Good and faithful servant, thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Here's the precept. Mark 4, go back to Mark 4 again and verse 20. 
Mark chapter 4, verse 20. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100. Y'all see that? That's what the Lord is looking for, an increase. The word of God is not just for you. Hey, there's a scripture in Sirach that said, I didn't just learn for me, but I learned for all them. You know what it's about? Y'all know I got a short-term memory. Help me out here. Find that for me. I learned this not for myself, but for all them. Yes, sir. I got it. Ecclesiastes chapter 33, verse 17. Okay. Consider that I labored not for myself only, but for all them that seek learning. That's why we learn these scriptures. Of course, it's for you first, but it's mainly... To help you and all those that come in after you. That's why I said back in Mark uh, 420 again. Yes, sir. Mark chapter 4, verse 20. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100. Mm, and some 100. Go back to Matthew 25 now. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 24. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown. When it says reaping where thou hast not sown, Christ is not on the earth doing the teaching for us. He's with the Father. We're the ones on the earth doing the work. But Christ is going to reap the benefits. We are the benefits. We're, he's reaping us. Go ahead. And gathering where thou hast not straw. Right. Christ ain't down here gathering where he has not strong or done the work. Go ahead. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Meaning he became unprofitable. He became useless. He let the cares of the world and lust of other things creep in. And it choked the word of God out of him. Go ahead. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, thou wicked and slothful servant. So the Lord didn't say, oh, I understand. He didn't, no, no, no. He said, you wicked and lazy servant. Go ahead. Thou knewest that I reap where I sow not and gather where I have not strong. You knew this before. You knew the scriptures. You knew that. What did he say? You knew that I reap where I sow not. You knew that I gather where I have not straw. Go ahead. Thou oughtest, therefore, to have put my money to the exchangers. This is the exchangers. The church is the exchangers. The body of Christ, the nation of Israel, is the exchangers. Another, I think in Luke, it uses the word bank. Used, the exchangers is the bank, which is the exchangers. Read. And then. Wait, let me, find me that and make sure I said the right thing. Find me that, make sure I got it right it might be Luke. It might be Luke 19. Verse 23. Luke 19, 23. Luke chapter 19, verse 23. Wherefore, then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required my own with usury. Usury means interest. That's why it says some 30-fold, some 40, some 100. Interest. Why? Because each one teach one. We're out teaching and the listeners are coming in. The videos that, and a lot of y'all don't think, the, the, the IT team, the brothers that edit the videos are very important. Because guess what? Those videos that people are looking at helps bring them in. The production and all that, they go, wow, the, not only is the teaching good, the production is excellent. They come in. So guess what? Everybody gets a reward. Oh, yeah, yeah, IT over there, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. It's very, when they do right, very important, very important. We couldn't do this alone. Okay, back to Matthew 25 again. Read that again. Matthew chapter 25, verse 27. Thou oughtest, therefore, to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Meaning interest. Because just he's, what he's saying in essence, just you should have done what I told you to do. That's what he's saying. If you had only done what I told you to do. Go ahead. Take, therefore, the talent from him and give it unto him which have ten talents. Mm -hmm. For unto every one that hath 
shall be given. For unto every one that hath shall be given. Go ahead. And he shall have abundance. And he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away. Didn't somebody do a, a song? Mama may have, Papa may, may have, but God best blessed the child that has his own. I forgot who did that. Who did that song? Ayana, who did that song? Billy Holiday. I think it's Billy Holiday, but you know, I think Ayana knows. She's into that jazz stuff. That's her. Um, we got the blessed. Whatever measure the Lord has given us, we must use it. Whatever the talent is, use it. Okay, was that it? It was. You right, Ayana. It was Billy Holiday. So we got to use that gift, your understanding in the scriptures, use it for the Lord's benefit. If you decide not to use it, meaning you let the cares of the world choke the word because of your porn addiction, your weed addiction, your booty addiction, whatever your addiction is, and it ain't the Bible, it's going to be that gift you once had shall be taken from you. What verse we at now? We're still in verse 29. Okay, come on. But from him that hath not shall be taken away. Even that which he hath, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Give me that in Revelation 14 before we close out. What is this uh, uh, outer darkness with weeping and gnashing of teeth? You only get the same reward as the wicked. Revelation 14, 9 down. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast. Worship the white man. And his because in- guess what? You are worshiping a white man with your porn addiction. I know I used to do it. That was my demon. I had 300 damn VHS tapes. Wicked as hell. I was the devil. He dead now. He did. <laughs> he did. <laughs> but... You and top brothers, we got to get over that. Gods to get over whatever it is, whether it's porn, weed, covetousness, drugs, envy, preeminence. And if we don't, watch what this says. Read again. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, you worship the white man and his image, mm -hmm. and receive his mark in his forehead, his policies, mm -hmm. or in his hand, or you support it, mm -hmm. the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. You're going to get the same judgment this white man get. Go ahead. Which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. And with that, brothers and sisters, let us all say shalom. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you.